I hate wasting nice wood, so I'm going to turn them into a cool looking little project. So usually when I trim bigger pieces for different projects, I like to keep all the leftovers and when I have some spare time, I can utilize my leftover box and make something cool out of all those still very valuable pieces. Please excuse the rather blurry footage, unfortunately my camera wasn't in focus and I only noticed when I was doing my editing, which is rather late to do anything. To ensure I have no air bubbles in the resin, I will throw this into my pressure pot and leave it in there until it fully cures. I normally leave it there just for overnight, that plenty of time uh, for the pressure to do its job and get rid of all the little air bubbles and just with some compressed air, nice and easy, popping out of the mold so we can make another casting using the same mold. Cutting a round object on a benzo is probably not something I would suggest you to do, but sometimes we have to do things what we don't want to do. So in this case I'm using a parallel clamps, what gives so much stability, it is so much safer. I slightly send the bottom of the piece, this gives a lot more uh, grip to the resin when I glue the project to the waste block. Using 5 minutes epoxy, this is a two part um, epoxy resin, it works really well especially for smaller items but I have been using this for, for larger um, items as well and it's just, just an amazing stuff. And as you can see I'm using a clamp to glue the project onto a waste block rather than using my lathe to do that. Um, I find it is a lot easier to center the piece. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty much bang on. So yeah, it just it works better for me. It is a frequently asked question: What tools I'm using when I turn any hybrid projects? I use negative rake uh, bits. This works really well on on resin, as resin can be very fragile and uh, a lot of chip out if you don't use the right tool. So here I will show how the negative rake scraper cuts and also I will switch over to a traditional flat cutting edge. How big difference negative rake will make. So now we are switching over to an ordinary, I call it flat, flat cutting edge and I was trying to go very very gentle and only scraping a very small amount of resin and instantly as I pushed a little bit harder, boom, then I went back on again and started to go very very slowly scraping off a small amount of materials each pass but as you can see avoiding chip outs with a flat cutting edge it is very very difficult compared to on the right hand side you can see I was using the negative rake which has absolutely no chip outs whatsoever Oh, by the way, I didn't even tell you what we are making today. Well, the shape may give it away. I also have some new items landed in my online store. Check out at davidswoodturning.co.uk. Link down below in the description.
pre-drilling the hole for the stainless steel insert to go inside I used a little tape just to mark the depth I need to go in and once I reached the desired depth it was ready If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that big red button. It hugely helps the channel to grow and to continue to provide you amazing content week after week. So if you haven't guessed so far, I'm making a knife. This is my second knife on this channel, but this time it will be slightly different. Last time I made um, a cheese knife and this will be, well, I will show you very soon, but another functional item. It's time to remove from the lathe. I didn't want to sand only one side, so I will do a little trick and using my drill chuck, I will attach the handle using some additional tape to kind of make it a little bit tighter, tighter fit so I can, I can send the back end of the handle and I can also send the, the main body. And then sanding could begin. I sand it from 120 and went all the way till 600. Initially, I wanted to sand this all the way till uh, 1500, and then I can just um, polish it and buff it. However, it just wasn't sitting very well on this um, little improvised um, solution. So I decided to sand up to 600, and then I can apply a couple of coats of gloss lacquer. Once I apply the first coat, I will wait 20 minutes, then apply the second one, then wait 20 minutes and then apply the third one. Then I will sand with a thousand grit sandpaper and then apply three more layers and then repeat again to reach about nine layers of lacquer. I let it fully dry overnight and now we are ready to glue the little stainless steel insert into our handle. Using two parts 5 minutes epoxy resin, only applying a small amount because I didn't want, as I'm pushing this into the handle, to have too much squeeze out and therefore it just um, could make the handle a little bit messy. It is time to remove the safety tape which I use to protect my hands plus the blades and the final reveal to show this functional hybrid butter knife. Thanks for watching, see you back soon.